All right, hook number one, empty. Oh, big old turtle. Look at that. <gasps> big old turtle. Wow. Oh, 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 oh. Watch out. All right. Wow, watch out. So we have a huge <laughs> turtle. Huge. Right <laughs> that thing is wow. Look at the size of it. I mean, look, at, look how wide. Look how wide that shell is. This is unbelievable. Can you believe this? <laughs> no. Wow. What's going on everybody? I'm John Turner. Welcome back to Woods to Table. Man, I'm just excited to be out on the water tonight. We came running out here just for a little bit after work today. And uh, work has just been busy lately. I mean, crazy busy, but deep down inside, if you're like me, you just feel like you've got to get into the outdoors. You still want to catch clean and cook your food, but you just don't have that amount of time. Uh, so what can you do? Well, for me, we're going to run out here to our favorite catfish hole and drop a trot line. And when you don't have six or eight hours to spend on the water, kind of beating the banks and looking for the fish, uh, you come out here and drop a trot line overnight, come back and check it the next day. So when you don't have much time, this is a great way to still get out with the family and spend time outside, still catch that food. I'll show you how we do it. So this trot line setup could not be easier, and I hope you can hear me. I mean, there's kids playing and everything, but that's why we're out here, is everybody can have a good time in the middle of the week, just cut loose a little bit with the little time that we do have. Trot line setups couldn't be easier. We have two of these half cinder blocks. Um, think of it like an H, right? So we have a half cinder block and about 20 feet of this lead core rope on either side that goes up to the surface, and it'll connect to um, some of these white uh, solid buoys as mandated by the state of South Carolina. Um, that mark where your trot line is out here in the water and then the two cinder blocks are going to be connected by another piece of lead core rope We're going to do this about four feet off the bottom and in the busy time of year basically from spring to fall You have to check these every 24 hours and you have to make sure that the trot line itself is submerged uh, At least four feet below the surface. So we're going to do it four feet up off the bottom We're in plenty of water depth it won't interfere with any of the boat traffic out here and the way that we do this is we take these uh, the ropes that are attached to these cinder blocks, we're just going to tie a simple loop knot in it like this. This is how we're going to attach the H, right, the cross piece that's going to go over to this other cinder block on the other side. Couldn't be easier. All right, there's those two. Now we're going to go ahead and attach the free end of the first cinder block to our buoys. We're just gonna feed our leg core rope through this, which is gonna attach our float to our main, uh, our main line. What we can use in order to secure this, we're gonna tie a really good knot, but we also have some of these, I don't know, C-clamps that'll really secure that leg core rope down, cinch it down tight to itself. All right. There we go. See how that just pulls it down tight. See how this is attached? We've got our two buoys and this kind of C clamp right here. So this is gonna suspend like this up at the surface. About 20 feet of this leg core line is gonna go down to this cinder block uh, that's gonna be down on the bottom. And then we've got our little loop that we tied about four feet up off the bottom that will connect our cross piece to our other cinder block. And that's how we're gonna keep our trot line suspended up off the bottom. So now we've got, we've built the H, right? We've got cinder blocks on the bottom, floats on the top, and the connector piece across the middle. And every six feet on this connector, I've tied another one of those kind of, I don't know, circle knots or loops. Uh, and we're just gonna attach, I've made some snells out of 20 pound test braided line. And I've got just a mixture of five aught, six aught, seven aught, eight aught, um, you know, circle hooks, octopus hooks, um, basically just using whatever I had laying around. And that's the cool thing about this trot line is that it doesn't have to look good. It doesn't have to be fancy, just get the job done. So we're just gonna cut up some big, thick pieces of chicken breast um, throw those on each of these hooks and then as we we go over our um, our 
hole where we want to fish, we're just going to let the cinder block down, and then every six feet, we're going to tie on another one of those snells, put the chicken on it, drop it in, and then do that every six feet until the trot line's all the way out. One other little tip that really helps me a lot is when I've made these snells and attached these hooks so you don't get them all tangled up, and so you save yourself some time and having to do this when you're out at the water, get yourself a little piece of cardboard, cut some notches in it at the top and at the bottom, and then you can wrap your leader and snell right on there, and then you've got all your rigs right there in one place when you get out to the lake, no mess. Just a couple of minutes of prep. Now we just wanna attach our snells to these loops that we've got every six feet in this line. We're gonna drop that cinder block over, and as we feed them down, we'll continue to attach the hooks and put our bait on. First one, just like that. And then we're gonna take a good sized piece of chicken, run that right up our hook. Our trot line. Oh, there it is, way over there. <laughs> I see it. I was becoming concerned about it. So, day two, uh, we're out here to check the trot line in accordance with the law. Uh, right at our 24 hour mark, as a matter of fact. And uh, the weather, it, we got a break in a, in a bunch of storms. We're really fortunate to even be out here. Um, I take it a positive sign that the trot line is not where we left it. Uh, so I'm going to hope that that's because a big fish dragged it one direction uh, and not that somebody moved it. But uh, we're going to pull this thing up and see what we got. And I'm hoping for a big haul today. Yay! Oh, so far it feels heavy. It feels like a cinder block. so far that's about all I feel I don't feel any fish yet yeah, all I see so we may have to reposition this thing okay watch out I'm gonna put this right where you're sitting on that rubber mat imagine tomorrow tear up the boat imagine there's an old catfish and then we have to tomorrow and there's just a huge catfish all right hook number one empty oh big old turtle look at that <gasps> Big old turtle! Wow! Oh, holy cow. Watch out! All right. Wow! Watch out! So we have a huge turtle. <laughs> huge! <right now. laughs> Prehistoric. Not exactly what we're hoping for. So, first things first. Pro tip: wine corks on the hooks so they're not laying in the floor of your boat. Ryan, grab me that bag of wine corks right there. We have a big old turtle. Check us out, y'all. Oh my goodness. Look at that guy. Well, that was a success, man. That was a ball. It just wasn't the success that we thought we were gonna have. I was coming out here thinking we were gonna have a huge catfish on the end of the line. And at certain points last night, we probably did because we had two of them, those braided lines that were cut in half. But I'm pleased to have that turtle, man. We're gonna enjoy the heck out of him. This was a heck of a lot of fun. And I can't wait, we're, get home and we're gonna reset with a little bit of heavier tackle and come back out here again because I think this is a good spot. Plus, it's delicious. It's still, turtles are delicious. I don't know. So maybe we'll do turtle soup, maybe we'll fix them up another way. The possibilities are endless. I'm excited, this was a success. Can't wait to get home and get back in that kitchen. All right, I'm excited. Um, I'm starving right now. Uh, it's getting late and so I really want something to eat. Uh, but I'm excited for our first ever soft shell turtle. So I'm um, kind of a happy accident to have uh, caught this turtle in the first place. 
Um, usually with turtle recipes, like turtles, uh, type of meat that, I mean, it's unbelievably tender and it's really, really good to eat, but you've got to really cook it. I mean, you cook it and it breaks down over a period of time. You make turtle soup, I mean, this is a six or eight hour process. Um, and a lot of other turtle recipes, it just takes time. It's kind of a labor of love. Um, in this case, uh, it's getting late. I don't have that kind of time. So we're gonna kind of chance it here. And we're thinking uh, turtle po' boys tonight. Um, I'm gonna fry these things. We're gonna bread them, fry them up, and uh, just see how this turns out. And I'm hoping that it's gonna be really good because I don't really have a plan B. <laughs> so. All right, so we're gonna um, start with the front quarters, the front shoulders off of the turtle. It's left an amazing amount of meat. Uh, we've trimmed these up and uh, it still left us with just a, a ton of meat in here. So we're gonna start with just some simple seasoning. We're gonna do salt and pepper uh, on all of the little little cubes of meat and they're probably not more than like one inch cubes, right? So we're gonna do salt and pepper all over. Mix this around. And then in order to bread and fry this, we're gonna dip it in um, just a scrambled egg. And then I've got some, we're <laughs> proving to you, we're using kind of whatever we have around the house for this. I'm using some leftover seasoning uh, from some frog legs that we made the other night, which is nothing more than flour, Cajun seasoning, pepper, and uh, what else did we put in it? Season salt. All right, so we just got this in the bag. Uh, I'm betting that this is gonna taste really good on turtle meat, just the same way they did on frog legs. So we'll go from the bowl with our seasoned meat into the egg, uh, and into the bag for the batter and then right into our peanut oil which is going to be heated up to about 350 degrees. Why don't we just drop the egg right in on top of it. I'm trying to figure out exactly how I want to bring all this together and I want to do it the easiest way possible. Let's drop some egg in on top. This is two eggs scrambled but we obviously didn't need all of it. Let's drop some of these bad boys in there. And we got this oil to about 350 degrees. It's not going to take long. I mean these are I showed you before, these are only about like one inch cubes. It's just gonna take a couple of minutes. And we don't even need, like, we're gonna have some extra here because making po' boys, we're gonna load these things up, but they can only hold so much. All right, these things are looking about done. Our three minute timer has not gone off yet, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and take them off. They look great. You don't wanna overdo it. I'm not worried about the turtle overcooking because you can usually want to cook turtle for a long time, but I just don't wanna overcook that breading on the outside to kind of burn that. You don't wanna fry them too long. All right, so we are going to, we're gonna make the po' boys with some toasted French bread. And we sliced up some Havarti cheese and put that down the center. Be good. All right, I'm ready to get this going. Um, so we did this, like, we've got a lot of options here and how to build this, so you do it your own way. But um, we're gonna start with, so we got the Havarti cheese already in here, it's melting. Um, just kind of do a bed of the coleslaw in here. Throw a few tomatoes down the side. And then let's add a little bit of our, well, let's go ahead and add our turtle meat. All right, we've got a lot of the fried turtle. This is about as much of it as we have left because I've been standing here picking as we've been taking it out. All right, we're gonna add a little bit of this, this is fresh salsa on top. So good. Fresh basil leaves, came right out of the garden. And then we made some spicy mayo sauce to go on top, which is nothing more than chili powder, mayonnaise, and maple syrup. Absolutely awesome. All right, Let's see if we can fold this together. Just press it down in there with a knife. Still looks good. I'm excited. I don't know how I'm going to eat that. <laughs> that is a sandwich right in there. Mm.
That's delicious. What do you think of the coleslaw in it? You like the slaw in it? Mmm. Coleslaw is good because you need something to kind of balance out the amount of fried on the turtle. But right. the turtle's delicious. It's tender. Um, it's seasoned really well. And I actually don't regret at all that we didn't cook this for like eight hours. This was absolutely awesome. I love it. And um, I'm going to make a couple of these like a couple of different ways because we gave ourselves some options here. But this is absolutely fantastic. Again, and we weren't out for a soft shell turtle. Sometimes you got to take what life throws at you. In this case, that was what was on the other end of the line. I'm so thrilled with the way that this turned out. We're happy to have them. And I um, hope you guys enjoyed this. God bless, and we'll see you next time.